Hello, I'm Shandon Sarkar, and welcome to AP Computer Science A. If you need to reach me, my email address shown on the screen, csarkar at stanfordct.gov, is the best way. Before we get into our discussion about AP Computer Science A, I want to call your attention to another resource that was developed this summer, this website, westhillcs.com, which describes our academy and the courses in it. Let's have a brief look at that website. Here you can see by going to westhillcs.com, we have the website for our new Computer Science Academy that launched at West Hill on January 1st of 2020. Here is a video that introduces the Academy and talks about it a little bit. Here's a Spanish version if you need one. And then down here you can see there are individual sheets on all the different courses offered at our school. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to talk about this course right here, AP Computer Science A, where your son or daughter is enrolled. But before that, I want to also call your attention to this sidebar here, where there's lots of information about the academy, how to calculate grades, course prerequisites, and other information that might be useful to you or your son or daughter. Let's now have a brief look at this course page here for AP Computer Science A. You can see there is a list of tools that the course uses. Pretty much everything that is done in this course is online. And I want to mention that this is probably one of the most academically challenging courses at the school. In fact, as far as AP exams go, uh, students that have been polled after taking multiple AP exams have voted this course probably the second hardest of all the APs. Only Physics C ranks uh, higher in level of difficulty than this particular AP exam. Now, despite its rigor, I would have to say that this, uh, the course uh, tends to generate a lot of programmers. Uh, my own statistics show that about 25% of the students that take this course will end up majoring or minoring in computer science in the first year of college. That's an extremely large number when you consider how many professions there are out there in the world. Uh, the course teaches the Java programming language because that is the programming language that is used on the AP exam. And we teach algorithms and we teach uh, data structures and all kinds of uh, things basically needed with, uh, it's really geared towards someone that's already got a certain amount of programming expertise and we wanna basically just bring them up to the next level. Uh, I should mention that there's a course before this one called AP Computer Science Principles. And that one is really more geared towards students that have zero uh, previous experience. Uh, this course tends to be more for students that have a little bit of programming experience or have an unweighted GPA of 3.8 or higher in their previous academic years. The course tends to have mostly juniors and seniors in it, but there are a few freshmen and sophomore that are academically uh, capable of jumping right in or have enough previous programming experience to excel in the course. Uh, you'll find that the workload in this course is extremely significant and the number of quizzes and tests that take place are uh, extremely large. And uh, it's easy to get lost if you fall behind. What I've decided to do this year in this hybrid environment is on the days that your student is off, they are welcome to either watch my class live on uh, Google Meet, or I am recording every single one of my lectures so that if they don't want to watch the class live, they can also on the days at their home, uh, watch the class on replay. So far, this technique has proven to be doing pretty well. We're well past the halfway point in the first quarter and I feel like we're at a good pace. We haven't fallen behind versus previous years. And I would have to say I'm pretty satisfied with the uh, where the, each of the students are in the course. So in terms of what the course teaches, uh, we learn uh, start off learning about variables, then we learn about object-oriented programming, and generally it's a course that's designed to teach students how to solve problems. And as I mentioned to my students when they walk through the door, the very first day of school, even if they decide they're not going to be a programmer for a living, the things that the course teaches are going to be extremely useful. In addition to the problem solving, just having some basic concepts of programming are gonna be increasingly important to the professions of the 21st century. Let's say you wanna be a biologist or a mathematician or maybe uh, have some other STEM career. Programming may not be 80% of your job, but it could easily be 10 to 15% of your job. 
And this course will provide you the basic skills in programming that will make you a better biologist or a better mathematician. For that reason, I find that the satisfaction level of the students by the time the year ends tends to be fairly high, even though I kind of really put them through the ringer here in terms of their workload and difficulty levels throughout the course. Hopefully your son or daughter will also feel like the, uh, the workload has been worth it by the time they are ready to leave my class. The exam is gonna take place in May. Because of the current COVID situation, we don't really know if it's gonna be uh, on the computer or if it's gonna be sit down in person. That still hasn't been decided by the college board. I would encourage your son or daughter though to go on the college board website and say that they're gonna take the exam. Uh, the college board is offering refunds up until the very last day this year. And one of the advantages of signing up for the exam is they will get access to all kinds of additional study materials on the college board website. So with that, let me mention to you again that if you need to reach me, here is my email address. Otherwise, I look forward to meeting you all in person sometime if conditions allow. Uh, else you're welcome to try and uh, reach me by phone or by email. Uh, if, you, if you're trying to get a hold of me, uh, I will typically respond within a few hours. Uh, but if you want to uh, set up a personal one-on-one -on -one with me, I would welcome that as well. You won't hear from me unless there's a particular issue with your son or daughter. Uh, right now, uh, given the, the way this, the course has started, I don't think there are any major issues outstanding. And I'm pretty satisfied with the way the course is going along. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye. And I wish you the best of luck with your courses. Uh, this year at West Hill, if you're a student and if you're a parent, like I said, I hope that your journey goes as well. And uh, once again, if you need to reach me, please do not hesitate. Bye-bye.